hi everyone now i'm going to explaining the first unit of embedded system that is introduction to embedded systems in that you are going to study different concepts like uh, advanced embedded system designs that has uh, what is the main definition of embedded systems and uh, you are going to study characteristics of embedded systems main purpose of embedded systems applications of embedded systems the main difference between embedded computing system as well as uh, general computing systems and what are different quality attributes of embedded system these are main concepts we are going to cover in this unit main questions in this unit are we are going to get questions on difference between uh, embedded system and general purpose computing systems you are going to discuss and you will get the questions on risk and assess comparisons you are going to get the questions on difference between microcontroller microprocessor as well as hardware and non one on one architecture differences and you will get the uh, questions on application areas of embedded systems where you are going to use the embedded systems uh, what are the main characteristics of embedded systems the main questions you are going to get in the external exams so please um, concentrate on this concept in this uh, ppts now we'll start with the definition of embedded systems embedded system is a electric uh, electromechanical system designed to perform a specific functions it is a and it is combination of both hardware and firmware firmware is nothing but software you can say that is nothing but embedded systems it is going to perform both functions like uh, electric functions as well as electromechanical systems that means it has different motors to run the different uh, operations you can see the washing machines it has electric functions and electronic functions as well as it has a electromechanical systems that's why this is called as an electronic and electromechanical system and in embedded system nothing but it is mainly designed to perform the specific task only it is not used to perform the general tasks for example if you take the washing machine the washing machine designed only purpose to wash the clothes and you can't use that washing machine as a fridge like that you can't use the embedded system for general purpose you want to design a specific task so you have to design the embedded systems next you can go for embedded systems why you need the main features characteristics of embedded systems you can say the embedded system is to perform the specific functions and it has uh, both hardware as well as softwares and some of the embedded systems has operating system some of the embedded system doesn't have the operating system every system doesn't require the operating systems for example if you take the cameras cameras and which are used in the cam mobiles which has a different operating systems to supports different operation of cameras like that if you take a tv remote control it doesn't have any operating system even though it is embedded system it used to control the different operations of tvs and a firmware of embedded systems is a pre program and it is not altered by the end user uh, for specific task the programmer has to write the program then he has to dump into the uh, particular memories of embedded systems that uh, if for using microcontroller you have to write the program code once it is written you can't alter by the end users the programmer can change the program but once the user start using that one he can't alter the end user next you can see the classifications of embedded systems based on here classifications in the sense you don't have the general classifications here you are going to classify the embedded system based on different parameters here you are going to take four parameters out of four parameters you have to concentrate more on first and second parameters based on generations and complexity and performance requirements these are very important during the uh, explanation of classifications first we'll go for based on generations classifications based on generations here the can say the uh, first generation second generation third generation fourth generation and uh, now is coming towards the fifth generations first generations 
in embedded systems are going to designed by using the different processor like 8 bit microprocessor they start using in simple hardware and firmware in assembly code they start writing the code in assembly code and it is going to updated with second generations instead of using 8 bit they start using the 16 bit microprocessor or some of the 8 bit microcontroller also they start using to run the particular applications by writing the programs in terms of assembly code it is compared to first generation becomes a more complex in terms of instructions you are start getting more instructions second generation and third generations they start using 32 bit microprocessor and 16 bit microcontroller they start using uh, particular signal process calculations related processor like a dsp uh, digital signal processing processor and asic that is application specific integrated circuits these are mainly they start using these are more effective and efficiently to get the outputs while uh, using this processor in embedded system design they start giving more accurate results compared to microcontroller and microprocessor that is start they started to use in third generations fourth generations it is most advanced compared to previous generations they start getting system on chips multi core processors which uh, dual core quad core and octa core like that they start getting multiple cores to perform the multi task multiple events on using a single chip having different different core processor this gives very high performance results like that you are going to get different classifications in classification based on generation next we'll go for classification based on complexity and performance here you are going to classify the embedded systems like small scale embedded systems in small scale embedded systems there is a very simple task related applications they are going to design and they are not a time critical that means output won't get uh, it's not a time bounded uh, time related output is not will not be designed in this case we can get the output based on the requirement and performance is low and cost is also low and it may contains OS or may not be contains OS so that's why it is called a small scale embedded system just like a remote control designer or we can take toys manufacture they are a small scale embedded systems in medium scale embedded systems slightly it is complex compared to small scale and it has a performance is medium compared to small scale and low cost as well and it contains operating systems and next large scale embedded systems it's highly complex and contains highly complex hardware as well as softwares and it demands always high performance and time critical outputs for example if you need output for a in radar in satellite communications you need the outputs on time constraints if time gone their output is doesn't have any values and it causes different effects on the human beings on the environment that's why it is very highly complex and highly time critical applications and it contains multi core processors and co processors to execute different outputs after performing different operations in the systems usually it contains real time operating system as i told previously it's very time critical bounded outputs and you should get the output in a particular time and the it has different management uh, prioritization uh, prioritization management task uh, scheduling management while handling a particular task if you need one more task which has more priority then you have to assign that task for the highest priority and you have to give the service like that applications you have to design by using the large scale embedded systems and uh, next where you are going to use this embedded systems this embedded system you can uh, use the different applications which are listed here some of the main applications areas consumer electrons household application appliances security systems automotive industries telecoms computer networking systems healthcare measurement and instrumentations banking and retails card readers for this one you can get different different examples card readers or atm card debit cards they are going to use the chips banking retail that is e-commerce or e-banking 
and measurement instrumentation to measure different different parameters like current, temperature, or earthquakes. Uh, these are and uh, blood rate or blood pressure. These are uh, different uh, instruments designed using the embedded systems. Healthcare, uh, scanning, X-rays, computer network systems, routers. Okay, and uh, switches, network switches, telecom, mobiles. In mobiles, again you have different different applications. Okay, for that you are to use the modems. Those are going to design by using the embedded systems. Automotive industry, in industry, in automobile industry, you are going to design so many things in the car or bikes by using embedded system. That is cooling systems, tire pressure to measurement devices, and inside AC controllers and automatic gear systems and uh, automatic gear control systems these are all going to design by using the embedded system like that you are going to use the embedded system these different application areas then what is the main purpose of embedded systems the main purpose of embedded system is to give services as per user requirement okay by considering some purpose and some uh, particular parameter or particular task you have to consider if you want to get a particular output in effective manner efficient manner here i have listed some different purposes why you need to uh, design embedded systems first one data collections storage representation data communication data processing monitoring control application specific user interface the main points are listed here which has a different different purpose have each point and these points are very necessary before designing any embedded systems data collection storage representation that means if you want to design a particular application by using embedded systems we first have to collect the data so what are data is necessary what is the inputs are required what is the output expected output would come and are the intermediate inputs which are comes you have to collect all those data and you have to collect whether data you need to give as analog or a digital or mixed signals you have to determine next data communication data communication in the sense you have to uh, some of the data communication happens simple communication and some of the data is uh, duplex or full duplex whether you need two way communications whether you need a single way communications and here data communication in the sense you have digital communications analog communications or uh, multi signal communications like that combination of analog and digital that communication you should know next processing once your data start giving as input what are the intermediate processing units you required to process on those input datas if you are giving analog inputs your processing unit is going should be analog related units or if you want to make a uh, processing on the signals if you want to uh, have you, uh, you have if you have the digital units then you have to convert analog input into digital input uh, by using the adcs again you have to convert back to the digital to analog by using the dac like this you have to process the data that one you should have to make it next monitoring some of the embedded system are used to control the operations some of the embedded system designed for monitor the particular application for example ecg electrocardiography it is going to uh, measure the heartbeat of patients in uh, medical de domain that is going to monitoring you are going to monitor the, the pulse or uh, the heartbeat of every human beings next control if you want to control that is you can say ac that in acs okay you are going to control the temperature of particular room according to the outside temperature that is your say the controlling of that controlling applications next application specific user interface here some application specific user when gui is required what are the type of gui you have to give if you want to operate with the particular embedded systems whether you need to give the uh, keypads whether you need to give the touch screens whether you need to give the input particular joystick if you are going to play the games like that what are the instruments you have to give if you want to communicate if you want to interface with the particular application these are main purposes of embedded systems next this is uh, elements of an embedded systems which is comes in particular uh, main concept in second unit elements of an embedded systems if you consider one embedded system what are main elements we can see 
or what are main elements you have to keep in one and embedded systems first it has input ports that's very important if you design any embedded system you should have input ports that's nothing but sensors you have to use the sensors to sense different parameters with the real environments that are going to give the inputs to the system cores in system cores you are going to use the different types of controllers or processors that is or the digital signal processors or application specific ICs you are going to use in system cores which are connected to the memories here memory is concept again you have different types of memories you have to decide which type of memory you need for your uh, embedded systems RAM, ROM or NVRAM or OTP one time program memory like this you have different types of memories are available which type of memory you need you have to decide next other supporting ICs if you need if you want to communicate some external devices peripheral device if you want to connect if you want to communicate what are the peripheral ICs required and if you want to communicate outside the world what are communication interfaces required what are the wireless communication then what are types of wireless communication uh, facilities available if wired communication what are different ways are there like that communication interface and output ports finally after processing you have to give the output to the output ports here you are going to connect different types of outputs that is known as actuators next after knowing the elements of your embedded systems the core of embedded system you should know what's the uh, if i say the system core what would be what are the different types of system cores are present in an embedded systems we have listed some core of embedded systems general purpose and domain specific processors next application specific ic's programmable logic devices commercial of the self components these are the main uh, core of the embedded systems fall into one of the following categories if you say the uh, system cores it has different types of cores like uh, depends on the application requirement we can use microcontroller or microprocessor or digital signal processors or if uh, if you know the application specific application uh, you are designing you can use application specific ICs are available the ready mainly in the market you can take those and directly put into the applications and you can uh, interface with uh, sensors and you can get the output on the output ports that is actuators or if for uh, designing by using the PLDs you can use directly program logic devices and connect it and get the output last one commercial of the cell components you can uh, in short form it is known as cores depends on application specific requirements the programmer or developers will not spend more time to design new new components for his applications instead of doing like that if already available components is there in the market he has to go and purchase those components and he is going to fix into the circuits and he is going to design the entire embedded system for doing like this he can save the lot of time to save for the designing part and uh, uh, as soon as early possibly he can uh, release his product into the market like that he can get the commercial of sell the components here next you can uh, compare what is the main difference between gpp versus asip that is gpp means general purpose processors asip means application specific interface processors general purpose processors is designed for general computation task for example processor in the laptops you can already know uh, you can use the processor you are using the processor in laptop means that is going to perform different different applications by using the laptop you can perform so many task and it is a high volume productions unit cost for a chip is also low but in application specific instruction set architecture optimized to specific applications you can't do general purpose instructions for a asip how to use the application specific particular available instructions only and that is an opt optimized manner so these are restricted and uh, asps arises and G G gpp are unable to meet the application needs okay when you start uh, using the asip the gpp is mainly designed for uh, general purpose so uh, instead of using that one to reduce the cost of the project to reduce the cost of the product 
they start using the asip and compared to gpp asip more effective more efficient and cost is also less and it needs more competition needs compared to gpp next the main difference between microprocessor and microcontroller i have listed some of the differences here the mainly difference between microprocessor microcontroller as you already discussed what is mean by microprocessor microcontroller microprocessor is mainly general purpose it has a cpu to perform the alu operations and uh, by using the some predefined set of instructions in microcontroller it's a highly integrated chip that contains inbuilt cpu ram rom timers etc and in mp it is dependent unit requires like uh, timers and memory depends on the requirement you have to connect externally it uh, self contained unit you can't change it okay that is the main difference between mp and uh, music in mp it doesn't contain built in io ports uh, it has only cpu everything you have to connect externally that is everything comes in built in in microcontroller that's the main difference and limited power saving options are there in microprocessor how what are things you need only you can connect those components to the microprocessor you can save the power but here also includes lot of power saving features compared to microprocessors most general purpose in design and operations but it is only application oriented in microcontroller risk and risk reduce instruction set computer and complex instruction set computers depends on applications you are going to use a risk and risk in different different applications some of the cases you can use both in some cases you can use only risk in some cases you can use only risk risk in the sense lesser number of instructions risk in the sense greater number of instructions instruction pipeline is present in the risk and there is no instruction pipeline in the risk and sysc it is a orthogonal instruction set which are operates on any register on any addressing modes here no restrictions you can use any addressing modes any register set if are using risk because it is very limited number of instructions which are those are you can make the different operations by using only limited number of addressing modes and registers but in sysc you have large number of registers large number of uh, addressing modes that's why it is known as non orthogonal instruction set for particular operations you have to use particular registers and particular addressing modes large number of registers are available in risk but limited number of registers are available and the programmer needs to write the more code to execute the task in risk in sysc uh, programmer can achieve the same with the single instructions in single instruction you can perform so many functions in sysc but program has to write large number of code if you want to execute as uh, task in the risk here fixed length instructions in risk variable length instruction instruction length will be different for the sysc but it is will be fixed in the sysc uh, it is use the hardware architectures it is going to use one on one architecture which is different memory for data and program and here single memory space for data and program in risk you can see hardware and one on one architecture difference hardware are separate buses for instruction and data on one architecture single shared bus for instruction and data hardware easy to pipelines on one architecture low performance compared to hardware because it is single shared bus because it takes so much time to read the data and program because it is a single shared bus Uh, while accessing one data you can't access the program that is a problem with the single shared bus that's not case in harvard by simultaneously you can access both that's why it is high performance but it is cost is high because separate data memory separate separate code memory it is cheaper you are using only single memories and no memory alignment problem in the harvard because both are separately aligned but one on one architecture you have to allow the self modifying codes to access the data and co program so finally is hardware architecture as we discuss both are separate stored physically in different locations both are stored in single memories so there is a chance of corrupt the program memory while accessing the data memory also this is a problem with the on one architectures next we'll discuss how to store and load operations by using uh, given some uh, example here load r1 comma x Store R2 comma Y add R3 comma R1 comma R2 store R3 comma Z like this they are going to write the program is a simple addition program here memory locations are X and Y here stored result in Z here the load is a mnemonics which is going to tell to the CPU 
what operation has to do load means it is going to load the content of memory locations that is register r1 into the x same thing auto content will be stored in y and finally result is going to stored into the r3 after addition of r1 and r2 and finally result will be stored in z from the register to z and next is instruction pipelining instruction pipelining it is conventional instruction execution fetch decode execute by using the pipeline you can access or you can process more than one instruction at a time it is uh, by doing like this you can process more than one instructions which is going to increase the speed of execution of instructions already have discussed what is meant by asic it is microchip designed to perform the unique applications so you can go through this one you can understand the mainly very kind of small area and it helps to for designing part it saves the time and it reduces the cost it is free fabricated or as per the programmer they are going to design particular devices and it is very highly profitable for the large volume productions and it saves the time okay it saves uh, the releasing of product to the market and like this it helps more that's why it's very useful next PLD that is program logic devices the classified two types one is fixed and another is programmable in market you will get fixed program logic devices that permit once function is fixed circuit or whatever there in fixed logic device you can't change it as per that only how to write the programs and it has large number of features capacity and speed if you are going for the programmable you can change the program or you can change the circuits as per the requirement of applications that's why you can rewritable memory is also available in pls so depends on the design phase customers you can change the circuitry in future or initially as per the changes of the customers you can change the circuits the so main advantage is of programmable logic device next cpld and fpga that is these are two different programmable logic devices fpga kit also available cpld kits also available depends on the requirement of programmer you have to select which kit you are available for that you should know what is meant by pl programmable gate array okay that is high logic density more most features highest performance and it has built in hardware processors clock management systems and how you are going to send the signals from one device to another devices it has a wide range of applications in telecom and dsp cpld it's a logic density is very small and it very predictable timing characteristics very inexpensive and cost sensitive battery operated and it depends on the battery it won't go for long period so it's portable applications such as in mobile phones you can use a cpld these are main advantages of pld program logic devices you can use offer the customer with a more flexibility you can change the circuits as per the uh, customer requirement and they are going to order only just some number of parts as a pld is whenever they need okay for this they can save the time again for designing those parts and you can reprogram you can change the program again you can add new features you can upgrade a system easily that makes more uh, flexible in pld usage in the operating in the embedded system design scores commercial of the self components the provides easy integration and interoperability with existing system components and for example a remote control to toy twice car control uh, unlike rf circuitry adc ultraviolet detectors these are readily available in the course they can use those devices readily can put into the design and you can develop the entire product it uh, reduce cost and cheap uh, these are device also cheap and instead of designing these devices you can get it and easily fix it into the circuits next memory concept as you discussed there are different types of memories like flash rom nvrams uh, programmable read only memory mask read only memory electrical programmable read only memory electrical erasable programmable uh, read only memories these are different types of memories and you have explain all the types of memories mask rom is one time programmable memories and 
pre programmed by the manufacturers make use of hardware technology for storing the data less expensive it is permanent in bit storage you can't change can't alter the bit information that's known as mask rom next pre rom or otp it is one time program memory it is same as a m rom mask rom once you program this memory you can't change it and here you are going to use a fuse to burn the represent zero and not burn means represent a one and you can't change you can't reprogram not used for the developments if from electrical programmable read only memories you can store the information in this memories by changing the floating gate of fat and you can use a quartz crystal window used to erase the information here you can easily erase the information and you can alter the contents of memory whenever you need and to erase you can use the ultraviolet for 20 to 30 minutes time consumes and but it consumes more time that is in the makes tedious electrically erasable programmable read only memories it is more effective compared to eprom and you can erase the contents of memories by using the electrically you can altered and capacity limited compared to the standard rom flash memory is the most popular memory nowadays and latest memories and you can store the information in terms of mosfet in the area of mosfet and erasing can be done here sector wise or phase level and particular information only you can it is instead of erasing all the contents of memories it makes to uh, easier for programmer only required amount of memory or required amount of information can be add and can be remove easily ram in the sense random access memory is nothing but data memory here you can store the intermediate results you can read it you can write it you can change it contents of but it is once power is turned off uh, the contents of ram is destroyed direct access memories here you have two types of memory s ram static memory and dynamic memory and one more is non volatile rams static me- memory is uh, made of a flip flops fast typical access time is 10 nanosecond low capacity high cost minimum of six transistors used to build a memory cells it doesn't require refreshing that is the main contents of static memories it stores the information in the form of voltage if you take dynamic ram it perform mosfet and capacitor that's why it is require a refreshing compared to s ram and it's high capacity compared to s ram it high capacity and less expensive and typical access time is 60 nanosecond slow compared to s ram anyway ram is again it's a ram with a battery backup it contains static ram and a minute battery life span is around 10 years is related to the different types of memories and finally you can say that sensors and actuators here we have study different types of sensors actuators which are used in the embedded system as the input ports and output ports sensors is converts the energy from one form to the another form for major measurement or control purpose or processing purpose for example smart running shoes actuators to convert signals into corresponding physical actions act as the output devices here you are going to use a io sub systems which are different io uh, input and outputs are going to connect that's going to be different sensors different actuators are going to connect to the embedded systems here which are some listed inputs and outputs are there we'll study all those inputs and outputs you can see here uh, leds and seven segment led displays opto couplers stepper motors these are a uh, different types of io devices and in stepper motors you have different methods to step the stepper motors and relays keyboards these are a different io sub systems after that you have the communication interface in the communication interface you can study on board communication interface and off board communication interface in on board you have uh i2c or inter integrated circuit bus and spi bus and uh, uart universal asynchronous receiver transmitter bus and uh, you have one wire interface parallel interface and uh, external communication if you consider that's off board communication rs232 cable is one example usb 
and IEEE 1394 firmware and infrared okay and a Bluetooth Wi-Fi Zigbee GPRS these are the different external communication interfaces this communication interface part and uh, IO subsystem will study in details in next class along with will study okay embedded firmware or nothing but embedded software and some other system components like uh, clock timing circuits research circuits ground and protection circuits and oscillator units and real-time clock and finally one more important is watch talk timers along with last concept of second unit is PCB and passive components you will study all these things in next class if you study this much you will cover first unit and second unit successfully thank you and thank you for watching this video